Well, it was a person, uh, Gary Haugen is the president of International Justice Mission. I was reading his book, and he was talking about, um, he was talking about how in times of despair he used to ask where is God when he saw the crushing of the innocent he's seen all kinds of things he's seen the worst that humanity has to offer as an investigator of the Rwandan genocide working under Desmond Tutu during apartheid um, he has experienced all kinds of depravity and he says in times of despair I used to ask where is God but he said now my plea has changed I no longer ask where is God but where are God's people that portion of that book when Gary was saying you know where are God's people um, I immediately thought of this verse in Isaiah 58 when God is saying the same thing. He's saying, the people are saying, Lord, where are you? And God is saying, where are you? I, I called you my hands and my feet. And yet somehow that doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to be a reality for you. So for me, I, I, I read that, that passage. I read that book. Uh, I was you know, so challenged by these thoughts by International Justice Mission and their work. And I, I went to Troy. Um, this was on um, this was on Saturday night. I went to Troy and I said, he was watching TV and I said, I ran downstairs and I, he was trying to watch something. I got in between he and the TV and I said, I'm not the Good Samaritan, you know, and he, he's like, pause, <laughs> TiVo, you know, what? I said, I'm not the Good Samaritan. I said, I have come up with every excuse to walk on the other side of the road. And I said, the next time my neighbor is hurt or on the side of the road, I want to run. Let's run not walk. Let's not come up with any excuses. The next time someone's hurting, let's just try it. Let's just run to their aid. And the next, you know, Saturday, Sunday night or basically Monday morning, Katrina hit. And so Troy and I are left with this. We just, I just said this the night before, and we we're left with this conviction. So, of course, I said, you need to go. <laughs> and Troy said, no, you need to go. And so we decided we would both go. And, um, it was stretching for me. I was way out of my comfort zone. But um, we called our local radio station. We said, we'll have our bus in the parking lot if people want to drop, drop off diapers. And um, the night before, I was so worried, this is a stupid idea. You know, they're not even going to need diapers. We're going to, you know, we're not even going to, the, the, the newscasters are saying, don't come, you know, send money. Just go through the Red Cross, but don't come. And um, that next day, I mean, blessing upon blessing, the, the piles of diapers. I and mean, we couldn't, we had to rent a trailer and, and everything. And when we got down there, they had a makeshift warehouse um, and they had just run out of diapers. And we got there and they loaded up all the diapers. And literally right after that, a woman drives in and she's got five grandbabies, three of them in diapers. And there's just the whole thing. It just felt like... You know, there weren't any, any even any communication at the time. Uh, everything was down, and it just this whole pilgrimage of people had come to this place. It was one of the most incredible things I'd ever been a part of.